All right. Hello and welcome to uh, Practice Lead Acquisition Problems Revealed. Um, I've put this presentation together based on a number of people um, asking the same sort of questions uh, over and over. And I feel that um, a lot of practice owners and practice managers just really get way too busy to sometimes look at the bigger picture. So hopefully this will help you identify quite a number of problems within your current client acquisition process and also realize where you need to focus uh, your efforts in terms of marketing. Okay, let's go. My name is Alexi. I uh, run a uh, digital marketing agency uh, in Australia, Brisbane. Um, I do have a few other uh, uh, affiliations and uh, offices around Australia, uh, Melbourne and Gold Coast to be specific. Uh, but if you're looking, um, uh, if, you, if you're basically uh, uh, watching this from overseas, uh, yeah, I'm from Australia. Um, my uh, specialty is, uh, you know, practice growth strategies because a lot of practices um, do very well professionally, but they don't do very well when it comes to client acquisition. And I think that's one thing that I really wanted to highlight today. Uh, my specialty is digital marketing and sales. Uh, my main agency is called Eurizio Solutions or Use. And uh, we have a specific brand for practices called Practice Results Marketing, which is all specialized specifically for um practices, whether it's uh, you know, medical, dental, or professional practice like accounting or legal, because uh, um, overall, the theme of practice is very, very similar. Uh, the overall position may be different than the overall clientele can be quite diverse, but it is a very similar formula in terms of uh, growth of the business. Uh, my, you know, magic, if you like, is the sales and marketing. Um, and I consult on this quite a fair bit because I find that executing campaigns that lack the actual uh, strategy often uh, have a lot of gaps is extremely difficult. And in 20 years uh, in this business, I have found that um, it's very difficult to address the problem uh, of the client without understanding the bigger picture. And hopefully today we'll touch on that. Um, so my specialty is B2B as well as B2C. So business to consumer as well as business to business marketing. And I'm also an author. I'm working on my second book right now. And uh, I also run a podcast. So uh, this is going to be a fairly short presentation um and i promise uh, every minute is going to be definitely worth it uh there's going to be a lot of things that i haven't revealed um before and uh, for those of you who will last all the way through the presentation i've got a couple of bonuses as well so first of all let's talk about the problems now all the time i hear about things like you know we've got no marketing budget uh we don't have uh, you know any extra resources to allocate to it uh, we need leads that's a common one um, or when the clients are inquiring, they just want a price. The whole conversation is uh, structured around the price and doesn't go much further than that. And then I guess when people are booking specifically for things like free consultations, uh, there's a lot of no-shows. I know dentists really get bombarded with this quite a lot. And overall, when you talk to uh, uh, these sort of businesses around um, marketing, they all say that the ideal form of um, marketing is referrals. However, there's not enough of them. If that sounds about right, well, um, yeah, you're um, definitely watching the right uh, uh, presentation here. And I think uh, it's a bit, of a, a bit of a hamster wheel, really. You're always busy, uh, yet you don't really uh, progress in the direction that you want. So if that sounds familiar, stay tuned, because I want to address quite a few things here that I haven't really addressed like this before. And um, overall, uh, why I find this important is because many uh, businesses really don't provide enough information initially uh, when they engage an agency or a consultant to really help them with the whole thing. So hopefully this will get us a few things uh, lined up properly. So let's talk about the customer acquisition process funnel, as we call it. Uh, we also use this for what we call a customer journey gap analysis, because here we can clearly identify exactly where the problem is. Now, the starting point of this whole funnel, and I've covered bits of it just to keep you focused on the whole process, and I'll cover this, I promise, as we go. Uh, is first of all, define the target audience. Now, you may think that this is uh, fairly straightforward. However, if you think that everybody is your customer or everyone is your potential uh, client, um, you're making a big mistake. First of all, uh, everyone's got different wants, fears, and desires, and it's very difficult to specifically uh, get them with the same sort of message. So I think it's really, really important to actually understand your target audience or audiences uh, in some cases, and understand exactly uh, you know, what that persona looks like or avatar, if you like. I think understanding a little bit more about who they are, you know, where they are, what sort of problems they have, how they basically make the inquiries, how they, uh, you know, journey unfolds towards uh, engaging someone, whether you're a legal firm or an accounting firm uh, or you know, a dental practice, for example. 
uh, you will find that uh, there are similarities within that pattern. Now, I first of all think that every business needs to have a specialty, 100%. It's so much better to work with a business that specializes in something or has a very distinct niche as opposed to general practices that do absolutely everything. So if you're one of those, have a look if there's a pattern in your customers and understand who's actually a good customer for you. I think that's very important in order to define that target audience. Secondly, I think, you know, list building is really an exercise that often gets ignored. And look, the reason why I put zero is towards the target audience because it's almost like the baseline, right? You really need to get that first before you move on to anything else. So list building is one of those exercises that gets missed quite a lot. I think that, uh, you know, those opt-ins that pop up on the websites are often overlooked. And um, I find business owners on, and practice managers typically say, hey, you know, I hate those things. I don't really want them on my website. But in reality, if you're paying for marketing, if you're paying for every single person coming to your website, you're essentially uh, leaving money on the table by not collecting their names and emails. And look, there are very practical ways to do this where if a person comes to your website, the timing's not right, um, you're actually not doing them any favors by not offering them anything. For example, I find that a lot of people go to uh, you know, dentist websites when they do research, you know, having a look at a local dentist or booking someone uh, you know, in their family, for example. Um, a lot of the time, people don't have uh, the motivation to actually book uh, themselves right now, but they will be very interested in booking uh, later down the track. So it's really a timing matter. And I think if you're able to uh, get them into, let's say, a new, um, you know, check up and clean type of offer at a special price, you will be able to secure them. In fact, we've actually tested this with quite a few of our dental clients. And we found that uh, when people opt in, um, they're not ready for maybe another three to six months to actually book an appointment. And they purely want to book, um, you know, they want to they want to take up that offer through the opt-in, not to miss out on in the future. So the fear of missing out actually works quite well in that particular regard. So that's one of the ideas about list building. But I think if you understand your target audience and you understand traffic of people coming to your website, first of all, you need to focus on building the list. Or another way to look at it is to increase your conversion rate. Because if you are wanting to get as many people converting into customers over time, um, have a look at your uh, conversion rates of people actually coming to the website and making inquiries and have a look at the gap of that. Typically, you're going to get, you know, generally 5 to 10% of people coming to a website, I'm talking very generally, uh, to inquire, which means that it leaves 90 to 95% of people um, going away elsewhere where you're not really capturing any, any information. If, if you run an opt-in, I reckon you'd be easily getting, a, um, you know, a 10 uh, to maybe 30% opt-in rate uh, based obviously on your niche and the more specific your service is, the more likely it is that you're able to engage people. But this is obviously at the mercy of your opt-in and the message that you put on it. So next step from there is leads. Now, I find that a lot of people obviously going through that list exercise um, turn into really good prospects over time. And really the exercise that's missing, and I see this all the time, you talk to established businesses, hey, how big is your database? They say, look, a couple of thousand people. And when's the last time you sent them an email? And they'll tell you, oh, look, we haven't sent one in a long time. Or the email that we sent, uh, you know, wasn't received very well. And it's like, well, what's the frequency like? And they'll tell you that it's not frequent at all. Well, you have to be sending emails to your list just about every single month if you want to maintain that particular relationship. Because people, once they receive emails from you, have got a level of expectations. And they either like what, they, uh, what they're seeing or they basically don't want to be subscribed to it, which is fine as well, uh, which is why you need to have that unsubscribe link. Really, really important. And look, depending on where you are in the world, there are different regulations that apply to this. But I think um, <clears throat> most importantly, it's just really a matter of understanding this exercise and how you turn li uh, your, your list into an opportunity uh, later down the track by doing things like email and SMS marketing. And that's another thing. Uh, a lot of people don't even tap into things like SMS marketing. Now... Next step is the inquiry or the uh, prospect stage, which is where a particular person would be inquiring and your job is really to qualify them. Now, this is typically where a lot of Google marketing starts. And when people search and do things like Google ads, you're going to get inquiries. And half the time those inquiries uh, wouldn't be answered uh, on time or basically wouldn't take your uh, offer up straight away, which means that your best bet is actually turn them into a list and go towards that uh, step one again. So, at this point, uh, you will find that if you're just doing things like Google ads, uh, potentially it's starting to cost you more and more over the last, let's say, uh, you know, one to three years. Um, ever since uh, COVID has basically kicked in, 
uh, things got really cheap and then they got really expensive really, really quick. And the main reason for that is because a lot of the uh, industries have got flooded with new competitors where the only thing they're doing is Google Ads because it's the easiest, right? And it's very easy to get onto Google Ads, uh, which doesn't really mean that it's always profitable for a lot of people, but it's certainly a way to get in front of the businesses. So at this point, if you're just doing... Um, if you're just doing things like uh, you know Google Ads or any consideration uh, face marketing, which is your SEO or when people search for you, I would highly recommend uh, looking into investing into awareness because that's the level of uh, marketing above that, which is where you could potentially present your offer and your business to a client before they start searching for you. How this is typically done is through things like social media and uh, things like YouTube. However, the trick is really in connecting your uh, marketing channels through things like remarketing and uh, overall this is what you want to do you want to make sure that the customer journey is connected so if someone's thinking about uh, you know engaging uh, a dentist or potentially wanting to get a lawyer um, you want to appear in front of them now the mechanism behind this is very simple before a person starts to search they typically do their research now um, a lot of people don't know how uh, lawyers work or how accountants work and before they inquire they would basically do some research so Google, YouTube, those sort of media work really well and they work together because they're all owned by Google, uh, which is where your uh, marketing actually really gets connected quite well. So at this point, really the idea is uh, try to make sure that you can um, enhance your uh, marketing through awareness and also make sure that the inquiries that are coming through and not converting are turning into a list building exercise. Now, the fourth stage here is all your sale and onboarding. Now, why I put sale on onboarding there is because at this moment, when a person is making a decision, you will find that uh, typically uh, committing to an appointment or saying, hey, I'm happy with this, I'm going to go ahead, you still need to make sure you onboard these people because people may not show up or they may potentially change their mind or there may be something that's affecting them um, you know, coming in. So this is a very important step in order for you to actually do really, really well. Now, this is typically what happens most of the time in businesses that are doing okay. And look, if you're doing this, um, you know, email marketing, social media, Google Ads, SEO, uh, and it's, it's working for you in terms of generating new leads and opportunities, congratulations. However, I think you're really missing the main point. The whole idea is not just to acquire those customers. The whole idea is to really get those customers and turn them into repeat clients. Repeat business is really what you want. And you hear a lot of people, um, you know, talk about things like uh, referrals and uh, advocates for your business. Well, overall, the exercise that we um, call fidelity is really this particular stage. Now, fidelity is about making sure people are actually loyal to your business on a much higher level. They actually believe in what you do. They want to share this with other people. And this requires a certain point of positioning, because if you just want to be another business delivering a service and there's no distinct point of difference, you will get people coming to you once, maybe twice, and then they'll move on. Now, this is the key around professional services because I find people who choose lawyers and accountants are usually, um, you know, th these decisions are based on life-changing events almost. If someone helps someone start a business, if someone helps uh, someone optimize a business, or if someone helps uh, someone resolve a matter so important, they wouldn't go anywhere else. Yet, when it comes to marketing, for some reason, we fail to engage these people over and over again. I am really tired of, uh, you know, law firms that specialize in things like, um, you know, conveyancing, for example, um, you know, telling me things like, hey, someone uh, came to us initially uh, to, to sell a property, but then uh, they're going someone else uh, to, to somebody else to buy a property. Uh, it seems fairly straightforward. We do conveyancing, but for some reason, they didn't engage, engage us. Well, that only means one thing, that your education wasn't really good enough in order for them to realize that you do both. And even though it's common sense, if you're missing out on the percentage of business in situations like that, something's wrong. Uh, if you run uh, you know, a law firm that does a bit of everything and someone comes in for, let's say, a business uh, or a trust setup or something like that, and they end up going uh, you know, somewhere else for another matter that's, uh, that you are able to resolve, same thing. And this happens a lot with um, medical practices as well, unless you really, really specialize. Once you start to specialize, this problem sort of sol solves itself yet you still need to provide a lot of information in order to help people realize exactly how they can refer customers to you, how um, they can potentially come back to you and what it is that you can actually help them with. So there's a lot of money being left on the table. And I find that the repeat business model is really what you want, whether you're you know, 
run a, a, a traditional bricks and mortar business or where you, you run a white collar professional business. It's all about that relationship and that's about the growth. If you ask any business brokers about, uh, you know, valuation of your business, a lot of them will obviously look at your revenue and your um, accounting. However, the next thing that really comes in is the size of your list and your relationship with that list. So I strongly recommend you look at that fidelity factor and make sure you understand how to turn your customers into repeat customers. Because the sad truth is that if you do this exercise until step four and you're inquiring customers as a dental practice, you are potentially missing the point altogether. And I'm tired of seeing businesses that are not doing very well when it comes to things like, uh, you know, profit and loss. Uh, they, they, they're just not making enough money to really stay on track. They're not making enough money to pay their dentist to grow the practice and help enough people. So if you basically spend all your marketing on acquiring customers and your customer acquisition is break even, you really need to, to look at this fidelity factor. So the key takeaways from this presentation are these. First of all, you need to look uh, into building your list and make sure you use those lists. Chances are you're probably only uh, communicating with people who have become your customers. That's what I see a lot with, uh, you know, uh, dental practices or uh, allied health like chiropractors and so on. They only message customers who have engaged them in the past. No one ever, for some reason, wants to uh, contact people who have come to them with an inquiry that they've not been able to book. Yet they've paid for that uh, advertising and uh, they paid for those leads. Now, number two, make sure you nurture your list and activate those opportunities. Keeping in touch with people uh, over things like email and SMS is an open-ended conversation. Anyone can potentially opt out at any time. But the whole idea is to build a relationship and make sure that you're able to remind people about uh, your existence and make sure that you're there to help them. Number three, activate fidelity. This is where the real money is, in my opinion. And understand that there's fidelity and there's loyalty. I actually found this, uh, this uh, definition, which I think uh, is really, really powerful. So fidelity calls for a certain authenticity, a faithful and unwavering reproduction of our principles and commitment, which we don't find in loyalty. And loyalty focuses on how we relate to others more than how we uh, relate to ourselves. So that's the definition I found. Have a think about it. And yeah, if you've got any questions, let me know. I think this is super powerful. And customer fidelity is really what you want to be focusing on. Now, we work with a bunch of different businesses, some small, some big, but overall, we've got a handful of, um, uh, you know, diverse uh, customers across allied health, um, you know, specialty uh, doctors and so on. Uh, we've got some big clients like 1300 Smiles that we work with, and that's uh, one of the biggest, if not the biggest dental chain in Australia. Um, I find that working with these businesses really helps me understand deeper the customer problems and also the um, uh, problems behind the actual business as well. If you find this information interesting, but you're not sure what to do next, I recommend that you reach out because, uh, you know, there's probably a number of things that we can help you with. First of all, this whole lead acquisition process, and we offer this gap analysis that um, really helps a lot of our customers identify exactly what they need to focus on. We also offer things like marketing campaign critiques. So if you're on your Google ads or SEO or social media or anything else, uh, it's worthwhile getting some feedback because oftentimes there are gaps within your marketing campaigns where potentially a CRM might be missing and processes within that CRMs are not really aligned. And the classic one that I get a lot of people come to me for is the quick wins. A lot of people want to come in and say, hey, where can I make a quick win in my business straight away? And look, there are lots of different tactics and strategies that we can talk about. Uh, but every business is different and I respect that. But typically, you know, we charge for a consultation like this, but I'm, hope, I'm happy to uh, offer this uh, free of charge just to help you identify a few extra opportunities in your business that could potentially add another zero to your business. Yes, that's right. You could go from potentially a six to a seven figure business quite easily by applying these opportunities. And we've been in business long enough to be able to help people with situations like that. Um, why choose us? Well, look, We've been over for 20 years, and overall, uh, my biggest philosophy is that there's no point doing contracts. So I like working with businesses on month-by-month -month basis, and uh, we uh, work with businesses in a done-for-you and a done-with-you uh, model, which is where we could potentially execute a service for you, or we can work with you or your marketing manager to help you uh, do better within their campaigns. Typically, marketing managers are great. But having a connection with a practice manager or the owner really allows us to take things to another level. We offer a money back guarantee. So if there's something that we can't really do for you, we don't charge for our services. It's as simple as that. Um, you know, I'm not a magician uh, to the degree I want. I, uh, you know, like to uh, 
try obviously help a business, but if there's something I can't do, I won't take your money. That's uh, as simple as that. We offer an expert service. So we do specialize in things like practice growth. And there are many strategies that we can talk about. And overall, I like the data-driven approach. So there are a lot of numbers behind your business, whether it's your analytics or whether it's your databases. And a lot of the time, you really need to understand what that means and compare that with some insights from companies like Google in order to understand if you're on track in terms of the metrics that you're following as well. And overall, uh, the main thing is our goal is to help you grow because there's no point being in stagnation because the world is changing, the economy keeps uh, going up and down. And overall, there's things like inflation and so on that need to be moving your business forward. Uh, we've been seen on the current affair, you know, Courier Mail and Channel 9. If you're in Australia, you may want to look it up. And over the years, we've partnered with a lot of the best um, uh, agencies in order to deliver a world-class experience for our clients. We're a Google Premier Partner, which means we're in the top 5%. And at the moment, we specialize in a service called High Level. Now, if you're into CRMs and stuff, you probably know what that means. Um, overall, our aim is to make sure we can deliver you the best service we can using the partners um, as our stepping stone in order to make sure we get you the quality that you actually deserve. Now, you can check out lots of different reviews uh, on our Google uh, profiles. There's uh, quite a few there, but overall, uh, like I said, we love working with practice owners. And you've got a few testimonials here, one from Travis West, who is a um, uh, owner and uh, managing director um, uh, of the uh, Back to Front Chiropractic here in Brisbane. Uh, we've helped him with their website, SEO, a few other things as well, and that's his testimonial right there. Uh, Q4 Financial, an accounting firm. Um, uh, he Wong, he's uh, uh, the owner of a dental practice called Central Dentist in Galpa. Uh, Bella right there is uh, one of the uh, practice managers of a business in Melbourne that specializes in um, dental implants as well. And there's a bunch of different reviews, guys. I didn't want to bore you with the details, but if you want to check them out, they're right there. We highly appreciate uh, all of our clients' feedback and take it seriously in order to make our service even better. Now, as promised, I thought to include a couple of bonuses for you, especially if you're watching this all the way to the end. I'm not sure if you're finding this uh, relevant or not, but hopefully this is going to get you at least a few ideas to help you change the business. One uh, bonus I wanted to share with you is our marketing setup cheat sheet. Now, this is a document we've been using uh, as of lately that helps us define uh, client avatars for our customers. Make sure we can fix our clients' uh, offers because a lot of the time advertising is pointless without an offer. We identify gaps within the actual setup. And what I mean by that is you may have um, a process that potentially lacks a couple of stepping stones in order for that to uh, work as well as it can for client acquisition. Um, <clears throat> we work uh, using this uh, marketing uh, setup cheat sheet to also help you identify your points of difference from your competitors. And most importantly, we help our clients uh, set up goals and expectations uh, using this document to make sure they can uh, accurately project what they're investing in advertising and how they're basically going to get their ROI as well. So have a look at it. Take advantage of this uh, particular cheat sheet. Um, you can either scan this QR code or follow the link uh, in this uh, presentation, and that will take you to a form uh, which will uh, take you to the actual uh, cheat sheet itself. It, it is a simple document, yet it's got quite a few thought-provoking questions, which I'm sure you will enjoy. My second bonus for you is actually my new book that's coming out. In fact, uh, the book is uh, in printing at the moment uh, and you can uh, potentially either pre-order, but I'm happy to actually give you a free copy um, just for watching this. And uh, because I appreciate your time, I thought I'd share with you uh, this book, which includes my journey as a business owner. Uh, and the actual book itself is about uh, sales and marketing, and how you could potentially do better within uh, your business or potentially in a business that you're involved in. Uh, the book itself features quite a few growth strategies and quick wins, which a lot of people absolutely love. So this book's going to be selling for $37.95 on Amazon pretty soon. But uh, here's your chance to get a free copy. So scan that QR code and um, yeah, get your, get your copy soon. Now, I thank you very much for listening to this. And uh, if you enjoy this, uh, please make sure you hit the like button on this video or wherever you're watching this. Leave some comments. It'd be good to find out what you guys think, if there's anything that really struck a chord. Uh, if you want more information like that, I run a podcast called Better Business. You can find me on Spotify, um, Apple, or even YouTube. Um, it'd be great if you guys subscribe and uh, you know let me know what you think about my episodes. I always like to touch on a number of different topics, whether it's business marketing related or sometimes 
in the areas of motivation and um, inspiration as well. Anyway, my name is Alexi. Um, this uh, presentation is specifically aimed for practice owners, and I hope this helps you get some direction in terms of uh, improving your cash flow and your business in general. I wish you all lots of wealth, health, and uh, yeah, do well, stay well, and look after the ones around you.